Hi, um, we're going to use some calculus to derive these three kinematics equations now. So um, let's start off with just your basic, the acceleration is um, equal to dv dt. Now those equations only work when acceleration is constant, so a is a constant. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the dt over to the other side. So a times dt is equal to dv. Now I want to tell you how you interpret this. This is a very, very, very tiny change in velocity. When will you get a very, very tiny change in velocity? When you have an acceleration for a very, very, very tiny time. So if you only let something accelerate for a very, very, very tiny time, infinitesimally small, you'll get a very, very tiny change in velocity. Okay, now what we do when we, when we bring those over like that, we separate these, um, I'm going to take the integral of both sides. So if they're equal, then the, the integrals of them should be equal. Now I'm going to integrate this from V initial to V final. My boundary conditions always have to be in terms of the differential. So this differential is T, so this would be T initial, 0, to t final. I'll just call it t. Okay, now remember, this is a constant, so I'm going to, um, that's just like the number 5 or something. And I'm only taking the antiderivative of, the, of this integrand. So this is just with respect to time. So that would be a t from 0 to t. Remember, with these boundaries, you just put them like that, we're going to subtract we're going to put that in and then subtract whatever we get when we put that one in. So that's equal to, now there's a 1 in front of the dv. So you're really taking the antiderivative of 1 with respect to v. So that, that turns out to be just v. And I'll put in from v initial to v final. Okay, if I throw in these, these um, times then, I'm going to have a t minus, now I put in that one, a times 0, is equal to, now I'll throw that in, v final, minus, throw that in, minus v initial. So if you come all the way up here with me, it looks like I have, if I bring the v initial on the other side, I have v final equals v initial plus a t. So that's the first one. I'll box that. That was one of the equations that we were after. Okay, let's take this equation, that v final, and um, since v, fi v final, the v at any time, this is the v at any time t. And so um, v at any time is dx dt. So instead, I'm, I'll write v is equal to v initial plus a t. But that is dx dt. That's what that v is. v is the derivative of x with respect to time. Let me bring the dt on the other side. So we have dx is equal to v initial plus a t dt. I brought the dt on the other side. And now I'll integrate both sides. This has to be with respect to time, so I'll say t equals 0 to t. And this has to be with respect to x, so I'll say x initial and x final. Okay, there's a 1 here. So when I, I that's what I'm taking the antiderivative of. So it turns out that um, when I take the antiderivative of 1, the, the value of that is just going to be x. And I'm going to substitute these in in a second. And then if I take the antiderivative of this with respect to time, this is going to be um, vi times t plus, now a is just a constant, so it's going to be... Um, a over 2 times t squared. Take that derivative and see if you don't get the, what's, what's here, what's the 
see if you don't get the integrand. Okay, and I, remember I'm going to substitute in, for that I'm going to substitute in um, x initial and x final. Okay, well when I do that, when I do that, I'm going to get the following. I'm going to get um, x final minus x initial is equal to, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up here. This is, I have to substitute in with respect to time here. So this is t, this is zero for t initial, and this is some other time t. Yeah, I was taking that with respect to time. Okay, so that's going to be x final minus x initial. When I put in time for t first, I'm going to get this. I'm going to make that one half a t squared. When I now I'm going to subtract from that what I get when I put in zero. Now when I put in zero to each term here, they both give me zero. So I'll be darned if that doesn't give me delta x is equal to vi times t plus one half a t squared. That's our third equation. Okay, finally, the second equation is a little trickier. There's a trick you have to do to get that one. And that is, um, you start off with a equals dx dt. I'm sorry, dv dt a equals dv dt. And um, I'm going to say that then a is equal to dv dx dx dt. Do you see how when we, if we cross multiplied, that would give us dv dt? I know you wouldn't think to do this, but this is how you derive that equation. This, convince yourself that that is that. Now this right here, that's V. So I'm going to say A is equal to V dV dx. So for that I just put in V. Let me bring the dx on the other side. A dx is equal to V dV. We'll integrate both sides. I'm going to start at V initial and go to V final here. And I'm going to start at um, x initial and go to x final. Okay, the derivative of that with respect to x is just going to be ax. From x initial to x final. Let me put that up so you can see that. That's just ax, because a is a constant. And the derivative of that with respect to v is going to be, um, I'm thinking that that's going to be v squared times um, 1 half. And we'll go from v naught to v final. Okay, putting in the terms here, that would be ax final minus a x initial and for these I put in one half v final squared minus one half v initial squared. Well this side is a times delta x and this side if I um, if I bring the half out in fact let me multiply both sides by two bring a two over here that gets rid of that half then I'm left with v final squared minus v initial squared. Lo and behold, I get, if I solve for v final squared, it looks like it's v initial squared plus 2a delta x. So there you have it.